When did you get back to, to uh, Sacramento? Eric was just on our show. That's got, that's on Howard TV, by the way. You can see him with his whores and everything. Hey, hang on, let me take that headset off. Okay, no problem. Let's just take your time. <laughs> Sorry about that. I was talking to my tech people. All right. You um, people? <laughs> yes, people. I, the JFSC people. One of them was with me the other day, Gina, when I was at your studio. Yeah, I didn't realize that. There were so many people, it got confusing. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, what happened when you went back to the hotel? Did those girls do you again, or was it over pretty much? No, it it wasn't over. It just, you know, all of us from the time change and everything and having to wake up early that morning, none of us were, had any energy to do much <laughs> of anything that night. So they didn't bang you again? No, but, mm. you know... There were no yeah. more appearances. Right. Just, you know, the time change and everything, jet lag. Jet lag. Let me tell you something. If you look like Richard Gere, there'd be no jet lag. Mm. Or if he had money lining his pockets. I think the Bunny Ranch had pretty much gotten the big appearance. They, they didn't need to burn those girls up and get them back in Eric's room again. But I, I was mainly calling in because of, you know, I wanted to say thank you for having me as a guest. It was fun, day. right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, one thing, though, you know, it was cool meet, meeting all you guys. Oh, but wait a minute. I didn't meet all of you. Somebody with the first name Fred would not leave his little sound booth to, <laughs> you know, stand up and shake my hand and say hi to me for some reason. I'll tell you why. He doesn't like the handicap. No. Oh, that settles that. Yeah, I knew it. Well, he doesn't think you're handy capable. He has fear of handicap cat people. <laughs> Handicapophobia. What, what, were you afraid when I grabbed your hand to shake it, I'd try to break your fingers? No, I was afraid that I would catch what you have. <laughs> no, I, why didn't you say hello to Eric, honestly? Because that's when I'm running commercials and running, uh, I actually have a job, Eric. I know you don't think I do, but I'm running commercials, I'm running bumpers, I'm getting things set up so when Howard is... Ready to come back on in a minute. He has a live commercial to read. You mean there you are other no, things? There are no, actually things that I do. You had no time to even just right. say, "Hey, Eric." Exactly. Right. Well, he. I don't. I, I don't even know when they when they pulled him out. He's so small. Uh, you're angry, Fred. <laughs> well, the guy just was, is disappointed he didn't get to meet you. Well, I'm sorry I didn't meet you, Eric. Although, after this exchange, I'm not so sure that I would have liked it anyway. <laughs> All right. well, I would have been nice to you. Like I, I was nice to everyone else that came up. No, there. you're. The, I'm the only one you threatened to break my body parts. All right. All right. You too. All right, Eric. Well, it was nice meeting you. And uh, I know Eric is on uh, Howard TV. His whole appearance here. Uh, Diana DiGarmo, Kurt Angle, uh, Natalie Maines was in the studio with Eric. And Eric, uh, if it makes you feel any better, I didn't meet Fred till my third year here. But I liked that. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Eric. Eric. Eric would have been nice enough to be nice to you, Fred. It's weird with Eric. With Eric in person, it's kind of weird because you're sitting there interviewing him, and then like sometimes he just doesn't even answer. Or yeah. Well, well he was so busy staring at Diana DeGarmo's pussy, he didn't really notice anybody. You want to know? So I had the opposite reaction. Huh? He, was, he wasn't staring. In fact, I think Diana DeGarmo didn't even matter that much to him. He was busy concentrating on those two whores from the bunny ranch. Oh, he was delusional enough to think that they really wanted him again. No, but he knows he's going to get action off them, and he's not going to get action off Diana DeGarmo. You never know, though. True? Yeah. Eric, am I right on that? I don't know. And also, I was trying to, because I didn't know how Diana and her mom would react to me being friends with, you know, people at the Bunny Ranch. So I was kind of trying to keep myself and the mutual friend that I have with her and her mom. I was trying to keep that from them, and then you spring that, spring her on me in the studio. I'm like, what the hell? I'm like, well, there goes that secret out the door. Oh. oh, I see. I ruined. <laughs> that's funny. What? See, oh. again, I blew it for him. See, it's everybody else's fault. Yeah, but that friendship always existed in your head, and it can it, it can still exist there. It's not a real thing, obviously. She uh, doesn't. Also, also, you guys, the week before, were building it up as if it was someone I never met before. When I met her, a couple of different. Oh, uh, Eric. So, so now he's putting it down. 
You're putting down my big surprise. Diana DeGarmo is standing there with you and like really no, paying I'm glad attention. I didn't say hi to you. You ingrateful little bastard. It wasn't much of a surprise. It was more of a shock than a surprise. Oh, all right. Well, Eric, maybe someone else will surprise you today. I got to go. Bye. Uh, Eric the Midget. Uh, Listen to that kid. You can never please him. He's, he's never, never happy. Amazing. Got that Diana DiGarmo in, his, in the room with him. And he's, he's got two whores that are banging the shit out of him. He meets Diana DiGarmo. He meets you. He meets Art. He meets Robin. And he always be... wants more. <laughs> The, uh, uh, yeah, and you know, if you there's three. It up too much. He's impossible to satisfy that guy. If I... there's three chicks in the room and two of them fuck you, you'll pay attention to the two right. chicks that fuck you. Let's face it. Eric the Midget. Hello. Hello. I was calling in for uh, when Lankford came on. What do you want to say? Well, just a couple things about. His reports the last couple of days. Like on Tuesday, he did a report, and he said that I said no comment to him. I didn't even answer his retarded call. Steve, Eric seems to have a problem with you, and I can't make heads or tails. Something about no comment. You want to confront uh, Eric the Midget? He says your reporting is shabby. Well, uh, what else is new? <laughs> he says you interviewed him about Natalie Maines. And you said he had no comment. No, there was no interview that we did with right. him. Eric. Yeah, it, it, I know there was no interview. I didn't answer your call that day, but you still said that I had no comment. Well, you, there was also some associate of yours who said that you didn't want to talk to us? Right, there oh, was. Because okay. I mean, he didn't have a comment. He didn't want to talk to you. Wow. Subtlety. Uh, you seem to miss as a reporter. Right. Absolutely. There's a difference. Yes. All right, Eric. Thanks for correcting that. Thank you. No problem. Boy, he tore you into asshole. Boy. A fucking kid, man. When he wants to get on someone, he knows how to do it. You could hear the you could hear the grinding halt the show came to for miles. Hello. Hello. Wait, I'm talking to my tech people. Big Rod. 